musical alphabet consists of seven letters, and their derivatives. When you put these letters in alphabetical order, we reach the melodic scale in which the notes have the closest approximation to each other in terms of their frequencies. When you learn harmony in school, or on YouTube, like you do right now, most of the time there is a specific order to start with, which is C, D, E, F, G, A, B. We call it C major scale. Another order is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, which is called a natural minor scale. Both scales contain only natural letters and a specific interval order in between them, which you are supposed to memorize, internalize and apply to the other notes in order to reach the other scales. On the other hand, when we look at these notes in a broader picture, we can see they repeat themselves, from bass to high notes. What makes them special? Is just which note you take as a root note. In other words, which note is more important in the hierarchy than the others. There is another order we can use, F, C, G, D, A, E, and B. This order of the notes are called the series of fifths. You might heard this seri as the order of sharps from left to right, or order of flats from right to left. Note that, all the intervals in series of fifths consist of same distance, perfect fifths from each other, which makes it easy to remember. If we continue to the left from F, we reach the derivatives of the letters. The series of fifths repeats itself but this time on flat level, which is a semitone lower. Same applies to the right as well, this time when you continue further from B, you reach the sharp version of the series of fifths. In fact, if we continue, we can reach the double flat, two semitones or a whole tone lower. And double sharp, two semitones or a whole tone higher versions of the series of fifths. This gives us a total 35 notes, which is the full palette of the Western music. When we take a look at the piano keyboard, we can see that there are actually have 12 notes in an octave. On the equal temperament, some notes are considered the same even though they have different names, thus different role in the harmony. We call these same sound but different name notes as, and harmonic notes. When we reduce the series of fifths from the first encounter of an enharmonic note pair, we now have 12 notes left in our hand. The series of fifths is not only symmetrical in terms of the distance in between the notes, but they also hold another useful feature to help learning harmony. Take any note as a center note, in our case, it is D. All notes right to D are the major intervals. All the notes left to D are the minor intervals. In other words, all notes on the right side are upper harmonics and left to the lower harmonics. To make it simple, all we need to remember is a simple quote. Moving towards the left gives resolution while to the right gives tension. Left resolves, right tightens. And just keep in your mind, this simple quote is valid for all the notes you pick as a center. It remains the same. Left resolves, right tightens. Let's go back to our smaller group of 12 notes. I chose D as the center in the first place. When you look at the piano keyboard, you can see that the note D is actually the visual symmetrical center, and all the other notes are symmetrically placed around it. Our intervals conclude on the tritone interval on both sides. Let's continue and place the series of fifths into the circle. You can consider the circle like a clock. Our center note D is placed on 12 o'clock, top of the circle. And the tritone is placed at 6 o'clock, bottom of the circle. All the features that I have mentioned so far still remain. All the intervals are placed symmetrically on the circle, as well as on the keyboard. But most importantly, the simple quote to remember still remains. Counterclockwise motion gives the resolution, while clockwise gives the tension. <laughs>